Dear Heavenly Father, we ask you to be with us this morning yes, God. as we share your word yes. and as we come to um, praise you and to learn how we can be more united with you yeah, yeah. and um, help us to bring hold down all of the strongholds and yeah. everything that binds us to the to this uh, temporal realm yes, and we just ask you to set us free and help us to learn to walk in your freedom. Yeah, we yeah. ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, who are the captives that Jesus came to set free? If we look at Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 20, Amen? Amen. Amen. Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So, what does that mean? We look at that and you think, are we captives? It doesn't look like we're captives, does it? We can come and go as we please, but yet and still, we're captives because no matter how we dice it, that we have, um, we have things that are in our mind that keep us in bondage, thoughts that um, keep us from being able to break through financially or whatever it is that that's troubling us. Some people suffer from depression. Some people worry. Some people just struggle through things that they don't even need to struggle through. Even Christians who know that whenever they're in trouble, all they need to do is call upon the name of Jesus, and he'll be there to guide them and show them the way. So what is it that keeps us bound? That I think this is what he's what Jesus was talking about is that he said he's, he's going to heal the brokenhearted that how do you heal a broken heart the only way that only Jesus can heal a broken heart but a lot of times a heart is broken because somebody did something to somebody or somebody said something to somebody when somebody says something to you and you feel hurt by it do you think that person is sitting in their house three hours later um, worrying about what they said to you? No. So what is it that keeps us bound and broken by something that somebody said flippantly and they just went off on their merry way? It's something, there's something inside that is holding us. It's some, some thought, some spirit, something is holding us. And that's, that's what we have to break free of. And he says, preach deliverance to the captives. We're captives of our own minds. Why don't we let it go? You know, it's easy to say, oh, just take whatever anybody says and just let it roll off your back. But it's not that easy that we hold on to. Words do wound. And um, it's going to take some time in order to, to uh, come with a new way of thinking about things so that we're not kept bound by those things. And uh, it says, recovering of sight to the blind. Well, I see you. Do you see me? Yeah. But yet and still, we're still blind. We don't see. I can't see what's bothering you, what's inside, what's hurting you. I can't see a lot of things going on around me but yet and still, just because I don't see them, does that mean it's not there? No. So there's a lot of things that there are to see. And, uh, and it says, set at liberty them that are bruised. That goes back to the first one, healing the brokenhearted. That we're bruised, we're damaged by a lot of things that go on around us, and we just don't know how to break free of it. But in the scripture, Jesus tells us how to be free but we can't be free unless we come together and study and, and work diligently to break those strongholds down. So I just ask you to pray for me and I'll pray for you that, um, that we can learn how to break free. Okay?
Amen. Second Peter, chapter three. If we look at um, probably around verse nine or ten, talking about our minds uh, setting ourselves free from our conditions and all of that and the first thing I want us to understand is the setting free the business of being set free is not ours it's the work of Christ amen, amen. now Jesus has set us free amen the Bible says, whoever the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. Now, but it takes time for you to appreciate freedom. Amen? Amen. So the Bible now says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Set you free. The truth shall make, make you, you free. free. Do you see that? You see that little, see that little change there? See? Why is this important? Because God speaks to us by revelation. In one place the Bible says, whoever the Son of Man sets free is free indeed. But in another place, the same Jesus says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Amen. 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 The fact that you have been set free doesn't mean you have been made free. And Jesus understood that. And he said so. So the Christian who doesn't know the program is one who thinks they have a problem. So we need to understand what the program is. The program is at some point you received Jesus and you were set free from every problem in your life. The problem really is that you fully don't you don't really understand that. Okay? Can you take, walk out of here, go to the closest Mercedes-Benz store, see a nice red one, and tell them, can I have this? And they give it to you? No. Nobody expects that kind of thing. Okay? We don't expect that kind of thing. So because of that, the goodness of God is something you and I cannot appreciate. It's too good to be true. Do you understand it's beyond our comprehension. Ask yourself something. How much does it cost God? Or how much does God charge you to give you water from the sky? How much does God charge you to give you vegetables from the earth? Nothing. How much does God charge you to give you fish from the sea? Nothing. If you just assume that it's there for you. Right? It's all free. The only thing you pay for is the service.